All right, so that's that's the function. Whether you you know, depending on your calculator, whether you have to use brackets with this horizontal slash, if you can actually enter it as a fraction. I would suggest going for this function to zoom decimal, so that you can see one of the important features of that function. So it looks like a straight line. Maybe that's not what you expected it to look like because it's it's a rational function. It's uh, it's a straight line, but it has that missing value there. If you were to draw this, you draw it as a straight line with a hole in the graph there. Right? So if you're drawing this thing, this is what the graph looks like. Um, some kind of line going up there, except you should... Uh, you should have a hole in the graph in the middle of the thing there. We'll redraw that. So I need uh, I need a line up to there maybe, and then I need another line, except it joins it there. I'll just freehand this part of it. There's the graph of that. All right. At one, it's got a discontinuity. It's got that missing value because of this denominator here, right? The domain is x cannot be one. If you're drawing the, the second graph here, you can't put that on the calculator, but you can draw the graph because it's going to be essentially the same with one slight difference. Oh, that was really good. It's making me crazy this thing. Come on. <laughs> oh, come on. The shift key is stuck down. That's what it is, that thing. Not, it's virtually stuck down. It's not actually stuck down. And you can't turn it off because it won't let you go to settings. So before I start using language, it will have to be bleeped out on this video. Um, let's finish talking about this. Uh, this function is exactly the same, except it looks more complicated because it says this function applies everywhere except for one. But where it's one, this applies. Is that where? How do I do that here? Let's go back to the calculator. What does it look like that value should be? If I'm tracing here, and I start to go to the right, what does it look like the value that that hole should be? Yeah, because you notice when you get to one here, this is disappears. But what does it look like it should be? It looks like it should be two, right? It looks like it should be two. But this is defining it a different way. This is saying when you get to x is 1, it's actually 1. So how would you draw that? Yeah, there's got to be a dot down here, right? This is difficult because there's no real thing that you can probably think of that's like that. Most of the time we have, say, you know, a plane. Take, this could be the height of a plane taking off, so the plane's going up. You don't have real things where a plane's taking off, it's nicely going up like this, and instantly it's down here, and then instantly it's back up there. Right? You don't have that. Real world things are not like that. Okay, plane's taking off. Oops, suddenly it's here, suddenly it's there, right? Instantaneously. Doesn't happen. But this for this function, it's going to help us understand here. Make sure not to do something requiring the shift key, or we'll become very mad. Um... There's that same thing, only this is x plus 1. So it's basically the same graph, but the hole is filled in. The reason that these three functions are here is because of the following. Because, and I use different names just to keep it straight here. It's because of the, the, the behavior, or the value at 1. The value of this one at 1 is what? What's the value of this one at 1? The third one? The value of the third one at 1 is 2. What's the value of the second one at 1? 1, right? What's the value of the first one at 1? It's undefined, right? Question mark. So we can say here that f of 1 is undefined. We can say that g of 1 is 1. And we can say that h of 1 is 2. 
So the point of this, before we write down what the limit is, the point of this is it's two here, it's one here, it's undefined there. It's defined differently in all three play, in all three of these. But if you write the limit of it, if I put a dot here, I'm going to put a dot right here. As that dot moves closer and closer, here's the dot moving. See, it's getting closer, and this is getting closer. What's what is that from either side? What does it look like that value is heading for? It's the the value is getting closer and closer to two. The limit of this function as you get closer to one is two. As x gets closer to one, this value gets closer to two. Let's put the dot over here. Okay. As this is getting closer and closer, what's happening? It's getting closer and closer to two. Doesn't matter that this value is defined down there. As I come from this side, where is it heading for? Two. Okay. It doesn't matter that that points down there. And this one's the easiest one because as you get closer to, as x gets closer to one, the value is getting closer and closer to two. It doesn't matter what, how the function is actually defined. The limit of all three of these are the same. The limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is 2. Even though it's undefined at that point, the limit is 2. The limit of g of x, except why am I putting it there? The limit of g of x as x approaches 1 is this one is the one that's the most uncomfortable one because it looks like it should be something else. And the last one here, the limit as x approaches 1 of h of x is 2. The limit is the same in each case, 2, 2, and 2, right? They're, they're all the same even though the function is defined differently. What we're going to learn eventually is um, that the function is continuous at that point when these match. If the limit is the same as the function value, that's how you can say that it's continuous. It's continuous there because those things match. If they're different, it's definitely discontinuous because this is saying the function's heading for 2, but then suddenly it's equal to 1. That's going to mean that it's discontinuous. There's a jump in the, in the function. And then the undefined one we have to think about, but it's going to say there's some kind of discontinuity there because the function is not the same as what the limit is. The limit and the function do not have to be the same. Are we okay with that? I know that this one's troubling because you want to say, well, look, it's actually equal to 1. doesn't matter what it's equal to. The limit is saying, what does it look like it's heading for as you come from the left or the right? This is here to save you some writing and just to make you think that things are harder than they are, right? Because as soon as you start using uh, notation like this, it makes things complicated. I'm going to stop this uh, and restart it again, but you can try and read some of that and think, think about whether